Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Minister. Congratulations uh, you. on your appointment. Um, I don't want to beat this horse to death, but I do want to go back to Senator McDonald's first question, at least make just a couple of comments, one brief question on that and one brief question on something else. But, of course, um, you said that you had made a commitment during the campaign, and I appreciate that. I always appreciate when uh, politicians can keep their promises. Um, however, you made some other commitments. You made a com the, the Robin Hood commitment of taxing the rich to give to the poor or the middle class. That uh, isn't happening. You promised that you would run modest deficits of $10 billion. That is now uh, certainly not looking like that will be possible. You made a promise to have 25,000 refugees in by Christmas time. That, of course, didn't happen. There was a promise on pulling the CF-18s out almost immediately, and we're still waiting. And at least we're waiting. The decision is being made, I believe, the way it should be made, not just immediately pulling them out. So I guess I would agree with Senator McDonald. Maybe we should have at least talked to others. Uh, Sixty percent of the people in Canada didn't vote for the Liberals, and I'm sure a lot of those were in Toronto. Uh, they also need to be represented. So. Uh, those, those are comments I'm making there, and I respect your answer. You don't need to uh, comment on that further if you don't want. My question uh, is this. Uh, you, you talked about Air Canada and, and their purchase, and I also applaud Air Canada for making that purchase. How much do we need to applaud uh, the Minister of Transport and the Liberal government for Air Canada making that announcement? How much pressure was put on Air Canada by this government that they... Uh, uh, that they go and uh, buy these airplanes? The simple answer is that Air Canada, which uh, is a uh, large airline, makes its own decisions about what aircraft it's going to buy. We're talking about billions of dollars, Senator. Right. Uh, they make their own decisions about it as a function of what they consider to be the best aircraft for their purposes. I can assure you that the Government of Canada had no role to play in trying to in any way influence Air Canada. Air Canada recognized that this is a very good airplane and in its class, in the 100 to 150 seat uh, passengers, and decided that they were going to make a commitment today, which they announced for potentially up to 75, at least 45 firm orders. They made that decision based on their own uh, needs for the future. Fair enough. If you say there was no involvement, that's of course not what we, some of us, have been reading today, but uh, I will respect your answer, and hopefully you will reconsider uh, possibly the decision you made so that Porter could buy another 30. A uh, pipeline like Energy East uh, is, is very, very important to many people in this country. It seems like uh, uh, almost all people in the country except Danny Coderre. Uh And, of course, he uh, now the, the fact that all these municipalities are supporting Danny appears to be somewhat exaggerated. Um, so this particular pipeline would transport the equivalent of 1,600 rail cars of oil, crude oil per day, traveling across the country. Uh, Minister, could you assure um, those of us in the western part of the country uh, that the transportation of their crude oil is as important to you as it is to us and uh, that maybe it is safer to have it underground than in rail cars? Certainly, uh, we would like to here in Canada uh, see if there was a way to get our crude oil from Alberta and Saskatchewan to tidal waters. Uh, that would be good for the economy. At the same time, at the same time, uh, there is an environmental consideration that must come into play. And that is why we have a process, the NEB. Uh, the NEB is supposed to look at uh, the viability from a safety point of view of uh, and an environmental point of view of building a pipeline. It is the process that is currently underway. Uh, we feel that it's important to look at evidence-based uh, findings before making a final decision. Decision. Various people have expressed themselves. You mentioned some of them. Uh, there's a total freedom for everybody to express themselves who feels in any way affected. And uh, in the end, a decision and a series of recommendations and decisions will be made by the NEB and we'll uh, wait for those results before making the final decision because we do believe that it is also important to take into, into consideration 
uh, scientifically based uh, environmental evidence before we proceed. Well, thank you, and hopefully this will be very high on your on your agenda. So, thank you, thank Senator.